Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast, where your source for personal, professional, and organizational growth and development, where we share original research, explore industry trends, and interview executives and thought leaders from across the globe. We hope you join us often for practitioner-oriented content around all things related to leadership, HR, talent management, organizational development, and change management. Maximize your personal and organizational potential with Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Do you enjoy the Human Capital Innovations Podcast? Enjoy ad-free listening by going to the Patreon page, and please consider contributing even at the producer or sponsorship level. And please leave a review. Thank you for your support. Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. In this HCI podcast episode, I talk with Dr. Aaron Etaw about the new Better Up report, The Connection Crisis, Why Community Matters in the New World of Work. Dr. Aaron Etaw, welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Thanks so much, John. I'm so happy to be here. Yeah, it's a pleasure to be with you again. You joined us, when was it? Maybe six months ago or so. Yeah. Um, You're joining us now uh, from Michigan. I'm south of Salt Lake City in Utah. And today we're going to be talking about a recent report out from BetterUp titled The Connection Crisis, Why Community Matters in the New World of Work. And just as a teaser, uh, 61% uh, of workers don't socialize with their coworkers outside of work. 53% don't look forward to working because of coworkers. 44% don't have a true friend at work and so on and so forth. We're going to talk about that. We're going to unpack all of that, talk about some more findings as we go throughout this conversation today. It's super interesting. And uh, in this virtual age, uh, you know, of heightened you know, just intensity of, of uh, the workplace and societal pressures and just everything that people are dealing with in this pandemic or post-pandemic world. Uh, I think finding connection, finding community is as, as important as it has ever been. And we're not really, we don't seem to be up to the challenge quite yet. So I think there's some things we can do to make a big difference for our teams. That's what we're going to be talking about today. As we get started, I wanted to share Aaron's bio with everybody. Dr. Aaron Itaz, researcher, author, speaker, and consultant, and serves better up as manager of behavioral science. She is a researcher and author behind Better Up's research and insights blog column and speaks regularly about the science behind human thriving at both academic and industry events. She received her PhD in industrial organizational psychology from the University of South Florida before Better Up. She was a professor and with over 30 articles and book contributions, she actively publishes research on the intersection of work and well-being, which has been featured in outlets such as the Journal of Applied Psychology and Journal of Organizational Behavior. And for anyone who doesn't know, those are really good academic journals. Uh, So that's fantastic. And she's cited in media outlets such as Harvard Business Review. Erin is the recipient of several awards for scientific work, including authoring the top research paper of the year by the National Communication Association and an outstanding author contribution by Emerald Publishing. Fantastic. Aaron, again, it's a pleasure to be with you. Anything else you would like to share with listeners by way of your background or personal context before we dive on in? Not really. That was a really uh, uh, wonderful introduction. And um, yeah, I'm I'm just so glad to be here and talk about this research. You know, uh, having come from an academic background, it's it's been a pleasure to be able to kind of translate those skills in a way that helps us understand current day problems in the organization and for leaders and trying to be able to find the right solution so that we can help people thrive and live their best lives. Yeah. Yeah. Well said. Very good. (laughs) All right. So let's, let's dive on into this report and if maybe you can start by framing up for us, why was this the focus of a report? There's a thousand things you could focus on. Um, Yeah. This was one that really caught your attention and, caught the attention of better up as a priority so why this report why why now and then let's talk a little bit about methodology sure so one of the things that is great about better up and the data that we have access to is that we can really follow people over time and see these trend lines and something that caught our eye as a research team you know in the day-to-day today 
was that as the world kind of began to open up again, people were going, you know, are going back to the office. We're also settling in to hybrid work and to remote work. Um, we, you might expect, or we might have had like a hypothesis that perhaps some of these aspects that we lost due to the pandemic would rebound or that we would recover a bit. And one of the areas that we just saw continuing to be um, low and trend lines just continuing trending downward was this concept of connection and feeling like we have community and feeling like we have, you know, personal um, sense of, you know, interpersonal uh, depth of relationship with people. And so um, despite having more social mobility, despite having more opportunity, you know, I'm sitting in a co-working space right now. I'm able to, you know, be in person um, again to a degree and, and, you know, safety concerns have waned. Uh, we're still seeing that people are really lonely, lonely, struggling, um, thirsty for community, thirsty for connection or reconnection. And that's showing up in the workplace. And of course, we also were interested in how is this impacting businesses. And so um, kind of just doing some preliminary exploration and the data around how people's uh, sense of connection to other people in their organization, their sense of friendship and their network sizes, um, how that plays a role in how people feel about their work groups and how sticky um, their employment arrangement is in terms of attrition and intentions to stay. Um, we saw those things start to come through pretty clearly. And so we, we wanted to really just dive in deeper and do, do a full-blown, you know, research project around it. Yeah. And we'll get more into this in just a little bit, but so much of what you just said, I mean, there are big impacts of all of this for organizations. So not only is there the human case, the human condition, we right. want to have people that are happy, healthy, thriving at work. I, I think there's just that that's a, a starting point assumption that we are coming from that we, we want to see happen within organizations uh, just to help to see people, uh, being their best selves at work. Um, but then there's there's also the business case and there's really hard negative long-term impacts for organizations when there's no community, when there's no connection between their people. And so we'll, we'll get more into that here in just a minute. Um, okay, tell us more about the data and, and the method um, that you used in collecting and analyzing. Yeah, so so this project was really fun because we we had a variety of different methods that we took and approaches to um, tackle this problem. One was your basic survey study. So we did a large scale survey study with um, US population full-time workers, some being in-person, some being remote, some being hybrid. Um, so we separated out those different groups as well. And we were looking at our data to sort of understand how those different work arrangements are having an impact on how people are feeling about connection. Um, and belonging and so forth. Um, we also looked at our better up member data. So like I was mentioning, we could kind of look at trend lines, how people are feeling over time, which is a really rich uh, source of data and information. And then another thing we did was we looked at um, Glassdoor data. And so we can get into that too. But one of the things we looked at was um, for organizations whose um, representation on Glassdoor has really strong signals of, of high levels of connection and strong levels of, of pro-social culture in their workplace. How is that showing up in ratings, financial performance, um, likelihood of being on best, best place to work list, that kind of thing. So we also kind of used some publicly available external data and metrics to try to um, you know tackle these questions from another angle. So that was another way. Yeah, wonderful. And so what, what does your sample look like? You're using different, um, different data sources, uh, yeah. maybe multi-level analysis, it sounds like. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about the sample size and some of those sorts of things before we get into the results? Yeah, so um, from our survey data, we had about 3,000 um, U.S. employed workers. Um, from our member data set, it's, it's you know, thousands and thousands. Um, uh, I think we have close to 150,000 people represented um, in this data set. And then um, from Glassdoor data, what we did was we, we took um, 78 companies for whom we also have um, employee data from our own BetterUp um, 
you know, uh, data source. And so that way we could kind of connect both external data, Glassdoor, financial metrics, et cetera, with uh, the member data and their actual lived experience from all of the um, assessment sources that we use. So we had about 78 uh, companies uh, from Glassdoor. Yeah, that's wonderful. And for any listeners who aren't data wonks and may you maybe not have a whole bunch of, of, of research expertise or background, uh, I'll just say as a, as a fellow academic scholar practitioner, I'll say that sounds like a really well-designed study, uh, a robust study. It's always good to triangulate and have different sources of data. Multi-level analysis is always good. So all I'm just, just to say all of this is, sounds great. And, and I, you know, I, I talk with a lot of people, I read a lot of articles and you hear about a lot of quote unquote studies you know, where, where there's kind of these simplistic um, results presented as if they're super profound, but when mm-hmm. you, when you go an inch below the surface, you realize, oh, the methodology is not actually all that great. So, so the findings are suspect and you get, you got to take it with a grain of salt. So anyways, I, I think this sounds very much like a, a more robust type of study that I would expect to see, um, you know, given your background, you know, it makes sense that I would expect to see in more of an academic setting, uh, which is not to say that it's not practical, because of course it is, uh, but just to say it's robust, it's, uh, it, it's scientific. And, and so kudos on that. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's so wonderful to hear. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, good. Okay, so let's dive on into results. I teased a couple of the of the descriptive statistics on the outset. Um, but walk us through some of the key findings and we can talk about some of the, the predictors and drivers of those um, different outcomes and then talk about, you know, what we can do about it. Sure. So, I mean, at a high level, basically the, the report kind of discovers and uncovers, describes that connection is really an important thing to people. Um, so I think through the last couple of years, um, there has been a bit of a reckoning or realization that, you know, actually having true human to human connection, it's really important. I know that we've known this, you know, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. We know that belonging and being accepted and being part of groups is important to us as a human species, but I think being faced with it so um, saliently and losing it. And then now trying to kind of recover and find our way again in this new era of work where we are going to be geographically dispersed. We are going to be working from different locations. Like this is not going to go away. So, um, you know, how do we help organizations, leaders, people understand how important it truly is both, like you said, for the human individual, but also for organizational functioning and then, um, and what can we do about it? And so one of the things that we, we saw is that, um, a lot of people are feeling that their organizations aren't addressing this problem enough. So 43% are saying that their organization isn't doing enough to help people feel connected and people are willing to, to, to kind of sacrifice a lot in order to find that sense of community. Um, so one of the things we asked in the survey study was, whether you would be willing to trade a variety of different kinds of benefits for a stronger sense of connection with your, with your work colleagues and your, your peer group. And people were willing to give up all kinds of things um, in order to find connection. And I think one of the most powerful things, and for most of us, this is probably, you know, most compelling of that list is money. Like we were willing to take a lower salary to give up some percentage of our uh, compensation in order to have stronger ties with colleagues. And so one in two people um, were willing to do that in order to find connection. So the point there being that, hey, organizations, hey, leaders, this actually really matters to people. And in the you know more competitive talent marketplace that we are in, um, this is something that we have to actually think about and proactively take measure to address because unfortunately what we're seeing is that it's not kind of correcting itself. It's not writing itself from, um, you know, the changes and the shifts that, that the world has experienced in the last few years. Yeah. Yeah. Well said. And, And thank you for that broader context. Uh, you know, I think we all know that we know that that the world has changed over the last couple of years. We know that the the nature of work and and a lot of the work that we do is shifted or changed over time. <clears throat> Excuse me, and and we know that those connections, you know, despite being more connected than ever through technology, we seem to be less connected in meaningful ways more than ever. Exactly. And and so that's that's an ongoing challenge. And and you kind of referred to it, but again, in in this world now that so many of us were thrust into during the pandemic, um, with work, working virtually or working in hybrid arrangements, 
uh, and we already saw this downward trend in terms of connection and, and good, meaningful, positive relationships in the workplace, you know, what, what has this virtual um, distributed kind of workforce model that's really emerged? What does that mean for connection? Uh, and mm-hmm. how does that exacerbate the problem? Yeah, well, something that we've seen is is that, you know, friendship has become um, something that people want and that is harder to get now. So our network sizes are smaller under this model. We're not as interconnected to the broader organization as we used to be. And so in particular, when we looked at people who are in in in-person versus hybrid versus remote, you know, work environments, something that we saw as as a drastic pattern there is that when you are a remote employee, your network size is significantly smaller than, you know, if you are hybrid and then if you are in person. And in particular as well, we also separated out individuals who started in their organization as an in-person employee and then kind of, you know, went into remote work, which is the story for many people who are still with the same organization that they started with pre-pandemic. Those people look really different than people who have switched jobs or started working for a new organization in a remote capacity. And it's that, you know, as you might expect, it's that, you know, final group I just described that is starting into a company, starting into an organization in a remote capacity that is suffering really the most from this, you know, network size um, degradation. And and the reason that matters is because when you have a smaller network size, you've got Uh, first of all, you're less embedded in the organization, but you're also, you know, you've got less channels or or fewer channels for communication, for collaboration, for information sharing, for access to resources, for career development opportunities. Like there's so many reasons why this is important. And so as organizations start to move into a model where um, remote work is a part of that, maybe it's hybrid, fully remote, whatever, if you've got some of your workforce who you do find, um, you know, important to you and important in terms of uh, retention and attrition and um, uh, talent retainment, then we have to think about how they're actually experiencing their network and their embeddedness across organizations, teams, and the organization as a whole. And something that was really striking, I think this is one of the cooler findings that we saw, was that if you compare in-person, hybrid, and remote employees to each other in terms of how much effort they say that they're putting in to developing relationships and to building that network, it's the same. Actually, there was no statistical difference between any of those groups in terms of the actual behavior that they display for building relationship and network. But what we saw is that the return on investment for people who are remote is like 36% smaller return on investment in terms of network size. So it's just not as like effective. Those those individuals are carrying so much more of a sort of a, of a burden to actually establish and retain and, and sort of cultivate the same type of network sizes. So um, that I think was just a really important uh, finding. And also I think helps shed light on that. It's, you know, um, there's a there's an onus or a responsibility on how we're structuring work versus just encouraging each individual to sort of take responsibility. Yes, that is important, but also we've got to think about sort of the broader culture and context and structure to help to help people find those connections. Yeah, we need to help facilitate that the best we can, because again, those outcomes for the organization also reflect on us as leaders. And so we want our people to thrive, but we also want our teams to be successful. We want to hit our metrics. We want, you know, to reduce turnover. We want to have better, more um, higher levels of innovation and higher levels of peak performance, all that kind of stuff. And, And so ultimately all of that's going to be driven by, you know, how we can help people connect. And if we fail to do so, that's also going to play out uh, to our detriment. So I teased at the very beginning, a couple statistics, 61% don't socialize with their coworkers outside of work. 53% don't look forward to working because of their coworkers. So there's a problem with their coworkers at work. (laughs) 44% say they don't have a true friend at work. That's a really sad number. Uh, 43% feel a sense of connection to coworkers. That seems 
quite low, you know, much lower than where we would hope it would be. 38% don't trust their coworkers. 22% don't have even one friend at work. Again, that's a super sad statistic. Uh, tell us more about some of those and, and, and what we know behind the scenes, behind those numbers. Yeah, well, I mean, I fully agree with you. I mean, these, these, these findings about not even developing like a friend or feeling trust with the people you work with. I mean, that, that is a sad story. And we, we, we want as organizations to foster that social aspect of work for, for several reasons, but one that we found that I think was really compelling is that we kind of looked at what, um, what friends at work means, like, does it matter? Because honestly, John, like one of the questions we asked was like, well, maybe we just don't need friends at work. Like we have friends outside of work. So who cares if you have a friend at work or not work is work. Like maybe that's okay. Maybe that's a new way to think about work where we don't actually need to develop deep levels of friendship. Um, so we did kind of want to, uh, you know, explore that as a possibility as well. Um, but something that we found was that friends at work matter for the organization in particular, because it makes work a place that people want to be. They feel, you know, more connected to their workplace and are more likely to stay at their organization. So you, if you believe that your, you know, selection processes and your um, ability to find the right talent and develop the right talent are working and you want to keep those people there, then you do actually have to think about this, like very, um, what can feel a little bit squishy or fluffy of like, how do we make people socially happy and, you know, find friendship and um, why that matters is because for every single friend that an individual has, and in this particular analysis, what we actually did, and I don't think I described this in full at the beginning, but we looked at um, a survey that we had collected in uh, 2020. And then we looked again at those same people in 2021. And in the 2021 survey, we asked about whether they had left their organization. So had they switched jobs? So we actually had true attrition data. Like, did those people leave the organization that we were at? So in a longitudinal manner, we were able to kind of address actual attrition rates. And for every friend that a person said they had at their organization in 2020, they were 5% less likely to have left their organization by 2021. And that 5% increase it, that sort of trend line of for every friend you have, you become 5% less likely to leave, went up all the way to seven friends. So once you get past seven friends, I guess you just sort of like, you're really social and I guess <laughs> you've got enough. Um, so there's kind of a threshold effect there, but I thought that was really interesting. And 5% at first glance may seem small, but if you think about um, for every friend that each individual makes that another person at that same organization is making a friend, you know, if you can bring, if you can help every person find a friend, two friends, you're bringing down the whole organization sort of uh, flight risk by a significant degree. So I, I thought that was really cool. Yeah, that's not a small thing at all. Uh, that's tremendous. And, and maybe you could define for us, what does it mean to say you have a friend at work? Yeah. Um, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, sure. Totally. Um, so that was another question that we asked, which was really like down to the very foundation of like, what do people believe to be good social connection today? I mean, everything's changed. So what do we, what do, what does it mean to find good social connection? And so one of the things we, we found was that there's basically kind of three categories of people. Some people um, want their organization to really be a, a source for friendship, right? And that friendship means I have people around me who I can share with about my family, about my um, my personal life, about my hobbies, about my my joys, my dreams. Really, I mean, it means what you, you, you think it means. It's like I, I'm able to share and be a little vulnerable about not just work life, but also personal life. And there's a reciprocation of that knowing of another person in that way. And, you know, camaraderie and alliance with that person. Um, other people um, maybe are, are, are probably see friendship in the same way, but they, they don't necessarily need or want um, to have that depth. It's, it's just being able to be friendly with people. And that feels good. It feels like I have a friend because I'm friendly with people in my workplace, meaning, 
yeah, we talk about a few things. We don't know each other like truly at the core who you are, your, you know, your hopes, your dreams, your desires, your, um, you know, I don't know about what your kids are doing, but I know you have kids. So that like kind of level of knowingness is sufficient. And then there's some people who really do see, and this is a small percentage, I think it was like 11%. So, you know, the, the, the minority, but there are also a group of people who really do believe that work should just be work. And we don't need to get to know each other. We don't need to find, um, friendship, but interestingly, even the people who orient themselves on this, like very professional end of the continuum where they see work as a place to, um, you know, segregate from personal life, even those people, a large percentage of them still want more connection than they have, which is also really interesting. So like by and large, even no matter your kind of preference, the trend line is that people are still thirsty for, for more, even if, um, even if they're on like kind of the extreme end of like professionalism as a continuum. And I'm curious, uh, for those who say it's not really that important at work, does, does it still have the same impact in terms of turnover reduction, that 5%? Good question. Yeah, I, I don't think we looked at that. I'll have to, I'll have to go back to the data because that's a great question to, to understand like from those different categorizations. Yeah. yeah, whether there's a moderator effect there. Great cool. Idea. Well, we just scratched the surface. There's so much more we can talk <laughs> about with this report. But I, I think that the key takeaway here is, yeah, let's focus on the social and emotional well-being of our people by helping facilitate good, meaningful, positive connections. When you have a really good support system around you at work, there can be a lot of problems in the organization. There can be bureaucratic headaches and frustrations, and you can be upset with this policy, that policy, or whatever. But when you have core people around you that you can lean on, who you trust, it can really create a bit of a bubble <laughs> around you. So you can still overall have a positive influence at work. The opposite can also be true. If, if it's a great organization, lots of people love working there, but your team is toxic and you have a toxic leader and you have people around you, you don't trust your flight risk goes way up. And so then people aren't going to stick around. So let's, let's focus on just making sure people have good opportunity to connect, to connect. And in this age of distributed work and in remote work, let's look for creative ways to connect people who may be virtual. Well, Aaron, it has been a real pleasure talking with you today. Again, we just scratched the surface. You're welcome back anytime to talk about this report or any other report that comes out of better up before we wrap up for today. I just wanted to give you a chance to share with listeners how they can connect with you and find out more about your work and then give us a final word on the topic for today. Yeah, please. Um, I would love to be connected with anyone who's interested in this or any other research we're doing at BetterUp. You can find us at um, betterup.com. Our reports are all there. We also have a research and insights blog where we put out new insights um, from our team every single week. And you can subscribe to the newsletter to get notified right into your your email uh, with all of our new research that comes out. Um, You can also find me on LinkedIn and Twitter. Um, Aranita is a pretty uh, unique name, so it's an easy one to find. (laughs) And thank you so much for having me, Jonathan. Thank you, Aaron. Again, it's been a pleasure. I encourage listeners to reach out, get connected, find out more about what Aaron and her team can do for you. Check out the report from BetterUp. And as always, I hope everyone can stay healthy and safe, that you can find meaning and purpose at work each and every day. And I hope you all have a great week. Do you enjoy the Human Capital Innovations Podcast? Enjoy ad-free listening by going to the Patreon page. And please consider contributing even at the producer or sponsorship level. And please leave a review. Thank you for your support. Thanks again for joining us for this episode of the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. I hope you stay healthy and safe and that you have a great week.